any director is going to have to think of the big picture when they're making their movie. They have to think about how the little scenes connect to other scenes that then create a movie. Uh, for a director who's very meticulously prepared like Paul Verhoeven, it's actually easier to work as a second unit director because Paul has a plan. Well, you know, I, I had known John Davison for quite a few years prior to RoboCop. I met John back in the early 70s or early mid 70s when he was uh, head of advertising, I suppose, it was his first job at New World Pictures. But he was becoming head of production at New World Pictures, and I was a fledgling film editor trying to get work. Before I knew it, we were talking about films, and we discovered that we were both diehard film buffs and genre freaks and loved art cinema and European cinema and horror pictures. George Franju, Alfred Hitchcock, Terence Fisher. We, we had a lot of the same tastes. So we, we, we kind of had a lot in common, and John offered me a job for no pay on Hollywood Boulevard, which I took. I became a PA, delivering coffee and donuts to the set, and I, I got to know John pretty well. So by the time uh, RoboCop was getting developed, I pulled back on my editing projects uh, because I wanted to be taken seriously as a director. John believed in, in, in my talent. He knew, he knew that I was trying to direct, and uh, they needed a second unit director. I used to run movies uh, at 20th Century Fox. They would let me have a screening room, and I could requisition prints from, you know, the different studios, and especially from Fox, since they had their own archive, and, and run movies. So one day I scheduled a screening of Ridley Scott's Legend, and they, uh, Fox had the European rights to that movie, and that movie was a different cut than was released here, and it had a Jerry Goldsmith score which didn't exist in the United States in the American version. Uh, that was replaced by Tangerine Dream. I wanted to see the movie with Jerry's score. And so I, I ran the picture and I invited John over to the screening, which I would often do when, when I had a screening. And then he'd invite me over to his screenings. Uh, so John said, do you mind if I bring Paul Verhoeven? And I said, no, of course not. <laughs> Please bring Paul Verhoeven. I hadn't met Paul. So I go to the screening, I think it was at 10 o'clock in the morning at Fox Studios, and Paul shows up, and we're talking. And it turns out John did not show up to the screening, but he sent Paul. So Paul and I watched the movie together. Paul wanted to see it because he loved Jerry Goldsmith and because he was thinking about Rob Bottin to work on RoboCop. So when the time came up to get a second unit director for RoboCop, which they they decided to do during production because they were, they were having uh, the stunt coordinator do some of the second unit. But I guess they figured they wanted somebody who had more of a, an editorial eye or an, uh, who would know precisely what to get to make things connect, shots that were missing. So anyway, they, they asked me if I would come up. I, I got a phone call from John. Now, I was in the process of trying to develop some movie projects to direct, and I had commitments. But I had a, sh a window of at least a few weeks where I could definitely do, do the work that they were requesting. So I flew to Dallas, basically to start work on the second unit, knowing that I would probably have to come back to LA to take meetings with the producers that I was working with on these possible directing projects. So I went to Dallas, and I would sit with Paul during lunch and go over with him precisely what it is that he wanted me to get in order of importance for the scene. And, and so I, I had a very precise list of shots to get based on Paul's desires. And what he said to me was, so if you get, get for me the shots that I need, then you can shoot anything you want. Go to town. You know, Paul would shoot the, the, the wide shots, the master shots of uh, RoboCop getting shot at and I would get at the closer coverage of this stuff. So I get closer shots of police shooting and closer shots of Robocop getting hit in the chest and a shot of his knee getting shot and then he falls to the ground and a tight shot of him falling, I would get that. So I really got to get a lot of stuff. Being an editor, 
I, I knew how these shots would be used. One, one major scene was uh, the gas station scene, the wide. They, they shot that first. So I did the shot of where, for example, where the bad guy is on his motorcycle trying to get away from the exploding gas station. We recreate the explosion behind the bad guy driving on his motorcycle. That was one of my favorite shots that I did. Very convincing. Paul would shoot during the day, and when he wrapped that set, whatever it may be, he would go on to another location, and I would come and work nights. I, one, one of our big challenges was that, uh, you know, Rob Bottin is a perfectionist. He was doing the RoboCop suit and all, all the RoboCop materials. Sometimes the stuff would just not be ready for shooting, even though we had to shoot. So a lot of my job was to try to get the stuff out of Rob's department onto the set. One, one of the scenes I did had a lot of the principal actors in it. It's a scene in the police station at the shooting range. Most of our principals are also shooting. Nancy Allen and, and her character is shooting at a target. Peter Weller is uh, RoboCop shooting. And of course, he, his shooting is the best. Now, the thing I was told about Peter was, he was a method actor, don't call him Peter. He'll only respond to you if you call him RoboCop. So if you want him to do something, you say, RoboCop, can you please come stand over here, raise your gun, aim it, and shoot, 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 shoot. Thank you, Robo. And that's the way that we dealt with the character. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. And I remember he, he would have a uh, Walkman because, you know, he's wearing a very complicated makeup. It took hours and hours and hours to put on. And it's a very insulated kind of performance. He's, he's, he's definitely playing Robo. So to calm himself down and to mellow himself out, he would be playing music all the time through his Walkman between takes. My window of opportunity to work with Paul and John on RoboCop was coming to a close because I had commitments for meetings in Los Angeles to try to promote my work as a director. And I had to leave at a certain point. Uh, so I, I think I lasted about two weeks or 10 days or something. Paul has a PhD in mathematics. He, he, he understands the practicalities to the making of a movie. Very scientific. Plugging into his process is a very intellectual and orga organic functionality. Remember, as a second unit director, you're supposed to be following in the footsteps, stylistically, of what the director has set up in, in the scenes that they're shooting. You need to parallel process with the creative process of the director that you're working with. So that the work that you do as a second unit director should be indistinguishable, hopefully, from the work of the director himself. In fact, you should be channeling the director. Your job is not to show off what you can do, it's to accentuate what the director's concept was in the first place. It's not about ego. Well, Paul is a singular kind of director. I mean, you say it's the indicative of, of a wave, but I, I don't know what the wave is because he's kind of one of a kind in a way. I, I don't really know any director like him. Uh, he's precise in what he does. I mean, he's a great artist, but he's very scientific at the same time. It's a great merging of, of intellect, science, and art, and storytelling, and mythology, and history. Uh, because he's very bright, he's, he's very well read, and he takes the sum total of, of all of the experiences that he's had on an intellectual basis and, and, and puts it in his movies. And I went on to work with Paul subsequently as an editor. Uh, in later years on pictures like Showgirls, Starship Troopers, and Hollow Man. So we had a good working relationship. RoboCop, who is he? What is he? Where does he come from? He is OCP's newest soldier in their revolutionary crime. I don't think anyone who worked on RoboCop was really aware that the picture would be as super successful as it was. It, it, it was a new kind of approach to science fiction. It was an intellectual approach. It had many layers of meaning. 
Paul is an intellectual filmmaker, and he's a great artist, and he took the material and made it his own, and his own preoccupations and passions and thematic concepts are imbued in the project. Uh, I, I say working with Paul Verhoeven over the years is a career highlight for me. Certainly one of the greatest directors I work with. I've worked with a bunch of them. I think we've made some great films together, and I, for me it's been a privilege and an honor to, to have done that. And uh, I'm very thankful for it. And the films endure. It's a great thing. Uh, Robocop is a film, I mean, I, I, I ran it recently, and I hadn't seen it in some years, and it, it's just a great picture. <laughs>